Hello everyone, my name is uh, Adrian Seed. I'm here to present the speech How to Contribute Project to Drupal. <coughs> so here you can see my profiles. I'm Drupaling for six years and two months. And I am a member of the Drupal Association. If you don't know what is the Drupal Association, is dedicated to fostering and supporting the Drupal software project, the community, and its growth. So you can help the Drupal community being member. So if you are not member, please check the link. Some concepts. Contribute is to give money to a common supply fund, etc as a charitable purpose. Example, can you contribute to buy my ticket for the DrupalCon? Yes or not? You don't want to see the second part? So really is to contribute is to give money, time, knowledge, assistance and other things. Uh, in this case, can you contribute to Drupal? Is a real question. We will talking about how to create a Drupal project, how to work with the issue queue, simple tasks for your first contributions, some common project issues, Drupal standards, the project page, and how to release your project. Okay, so you say how to contribute projects to Drupal, people usually think that is very easy, so there are really five tips that you need to, to follow. Visit the create project page, fill out the form, enter a project short name, click the, the save button, and click the version control tab for intrusions. That what you will find in the drupal.org site. This is the five step to start con contributing. So, that's it. It's not really like this, it's, it's more hard. You will see that it's a little hard to contribute project to, to Drupal. The first step, you go to the create project page. In this case, we will talking about modules, but 80, 90% is similar to other kind of projects. So you choose the module project. You will fill out the, the form. In the project type, you can select a sandbox or full project. You will enter your project name. There is a maintenance status that you need to, to choose to inform the, the user what is the status of your project and the development status. Then you go at the bottom of the form and you will click the save button. But the, the, there is a message always in the community that say that Drupal community promotes collaboration rather than competition. So if you will create a project that is very similar to another project, maybe it's better to open an issue in the issue queue of this project and contribute a patch, join force to, co to, to build a more stronger models or teams or distributions. So it's better to contribute than to create a competition in the Drupal community. Then you will click the version control tab for instruction on how to commit your code uh, to the Git, uh, Drupal Git servers. Now we have a Drupal project and we can start contributing to, to Drupal.
This will be mainly our work when we are contributing, working with the issue queue of your project. You know what is the issue queue or not? Yes? Uh, well, I've, I've seen it on other um, modules, but I haven't created one for myself yet. So usually when you create a project, Drupal will create for you the issue queue. If not, always you can go and edit in your project uh, page and you can activate, where you see, say, enable issue tracker. This will be create the issue queue for your project and you will see it in the right of the project page, something like this with the open issues the total of issues and some statistics, statistics about your project and usually I put the information that you see in the left some information with guidelines of how to contribute to the project you usually need to pay attention to this guideline we will see why this will help the, the, the contributors to improve the, the module, fix the box. Okay, creating an issue. This is the, the screen that you will see when you go to create a new issue. The text uh, in, the, in the blue box, this is a text that comes with the Drupal, in the Drupal site. Uh, say if you want to create an issue please read this before here you will find the issue template summary template and if you will create another issue security is another issue queue different from this it's not public and additionally you can add the information that you see in the green uh, in the green box this is an information that you you can add for your project with some particular uh, guideline. By example, if you want to provide a patch, I put a link for the naming convention for the path for the patch, and an example. There is another project like the web form module. I don't know if you know the web form module, but if you go to the issue queue, you will see that the maintainer add a more uh, a strict or more guideline on how to create an issue for the project because if you add more information when you create your issue, the maintainer will be able to find the problem uh, quickly or how to fix the problem or how to improve the model with your, uh, with your new request. So a well-described issue helped a lot to the, uh, uh, the maintainer, helped a lot in, in, in their work. Okay, let's create our first issue. This is a real issue in the only one module. This is a user that created this issue, but with some problems. As the user don't read the don't read the the git line to create the issue, you will see here the issue summary template is not used in this case. So even if Drupal add a message and the contributors add another message, usually nobody read this message and write uh, what they thing that is uh, issue description when create the, the report. So usually I create I reply with a message like this. Hi, thanks for reporting. Will be great if, if the next time you will use the use issue summary template to report one issue. I will check now the issue. Our job here usually is free but take our time. So if you describe in the correct way an issue will be better for for us. Okay. 
In the Drupal community, we live in many different countries and speak different languages. I usually speak in French or Spanish, so English is a little hard for me. I am a good example of, of this, but we need English to communicate in the community. If you don't know how to write in English, or if you don't know how to create a good message, you can use uh, tools like Google Translate. So thanks to Google Translate, this speech is possible. And usually I use a tool, Grammarly, that will create for you some, uh, uh, will fix some problems when you write your sentence. Uh, usually, I recommend to use this tool when you are, if you are, if you are not a, an English speaker and it's difficult to you to write in English. I recommend this tool. Another problem with this issue when I try to to reproduce the problem that the, the user described, I'm not able to reproduce the steps. So why this happens? If you go to see the issue summary template, you will see that, thank you, that it says, in the problem motivation, you need to, to write why the issue was filled, the step to reproduce the problem, and all the information that will help the maintainer to solve the issue. This is why it's important to read and to know the issue summary template. Sometimes, if, even if you describe the problem without the steps to reproduce, it's hard to see the problem and try to fix it. Always be polite with the user that report the issue. Remember that you start like a baby and then you make some step and then you walk it and then you run. So we need to teach other in the correct way. So I always write a polite message saying, please, can you use the next time the issue summary template? And sometimes the user is uh, risk, uh, reply my mess okay I forget it I will do it for the next time and the next time is better for me or for the contributor to start solving the, the problems. This is a joke for from Star Wars. So. Then how a core issue should look like? A correct issue is something like this. You will see a problem or motivation, the step to reproduce, proposed solution, and remaining task. Sometimes people think that this only happens in the core issue queue, but there are many, many uh, projects that use the issue summary template. We have here a, a button, maybe you never seen before. Is the first time that you see this button? It says clone issue. First time or had you seen this before? I have seen. Okay. We will see now what, what this button is for. There are a tool that will help you a lot in the issue queue. Is the DR editor. This is an extension for Drupal that enhances the user experience and functionality. You will have template insertion, path reviewer, auto completion, and image attachment embedder.
So no more excuse to don't review a patch, no more excuse about not using the issue summary template. Okay, when you install these uh, add-ons to Firefox or, or Chrome, you will have two buttons. The first say insert template. When you click the button, you will see that in the issue body where you write the, the issue description, this will be filled automatically. So you will have the template from describe the issue automatically. If you want to add tasks for your issue, you, you can, okay. You can click in the other button that say insert task and you will have automatically inserted a template for your project task. Have you reviewed before a patch for a project? Yes, it's something like this. It's very hard to to see what have been changed, what what are the new lines, what are the deleted lines. But with Dear Editor, you will see something like this. There is a button that says Review. When you click the button, you will see in green the new lines in the that will be added and in red you will see the line that are deleted in the patch that's a google chrome add-on yeah you can use it in google chrome and in firefox at the left you will have uh, the file that are modified by the patch and if you click in the file you will go automatically to the code for this file because usually in a patch you have all the code and you need to to take the the bar to go up or down to see but here you can click directly in the file and if you want you can hide all the deletion that will be occur once the the patch will be applied so you can see only the additions another useful uh, button will be the simple test button have you seen before this site okay this site we, can, we have here again Yoda. This site will help you to install a module and apply at the same time a patch. And you, you can install m different modules and test your patch. This is very useful because you will you don't need to create a new Drupal installation and apply the patch to see if the patch works or not or solve the problem. So this is a good tool if you if you need to, to test models in the in the Drupal community and if you need to test patch. There is another functionality. Usually, you see something that, like this in gray. There is a piece of code with comments. This is possible with this tool, the editor. You only need to select the lines that you want that you want to comment and add the the comment for this line to the left. And when you save and publish your comment, you will see something like this at the bottom of the page. So review patch is very easy when, when, when you use this tool. We have auto completion with the air editor. 
Some commons uh, HTML tags can be completed. If there is a user that write a comment in the in the issue and you use the uh, I know how to say arrobas the email at you, you type this sign and you put the initial by example s and you hit tab song if song writes on comment before they will be auto completed the the username so no more copy and paste if you want to create a link to a comment from another user, maybe, okay, I tried the patch in number five, and you hit tab, a link will be created automatically to the, f the comment with the f uh, number five. The same for the URL. If you have another issue with a number, you will put the the URL and hit tab and you will see something like this and link to the issue and with a color that talk about the status of the issue is if is need uh, need review will be yellow uh, patch to be ported is gray fixed is uh, green um close is red and the last uh, functionality is use it to embed image in your in your issue usually you need to right click copy image uh, your ill and then you need to click in the button to add the link but here you only need to click the embed button and the image code will be added automatically in your issue well now we have the tools and we can start contributing to the Drupal so here we will see some simple tags for your first contributions. If you want to, to have a module in Drupal, the first task is create the info file. With this, you will bring to life your, your module. This is how a issue for, for the info file will be look like something like this when you go to create your issue usually you need to write the title the category task bug report future request the priority high normal low uh, i don't remember lower i think the status usually when you create is open the version because you can have different version for Drupal 8 and different version for Drupal 7 and Drupal 6. The component code, documentation, user interface and who will be assigned to solve the issue. This is important because sometimes you are working to solve a bug and other people want to work together and they can see who are working to solve the problem of if there is nobody trying to fix the problem. And we have at the bottom the tags. You have different tags that can help to filter the, the issue, like Novice, PHP, CCS, JavaScript, Drush commands. There are many different tags. Usually in the sprint, in the Drupal cons, there are uh, a tag to filter the, the issues that will be solved. Okay. It's useful always try to add a link that will be guide the, the people trying to fix the issue 
on what like a documentation or how to how to fix the problem on some links uh, giving more information about the problems this is always usu uh, useful and in this case we have the issue and this is the final code that we will have when we solve this issue this is like uh, like a guide for person that are starting to contribute to Drupal okay usually you see this uh, this phrase in the Drupal community in Drupal there is a module for anything but what we can do with it so if you want to inform your users or the people that use your modules you need to do two things you need to create the readme and you need to create the help page for your module so this is two usual issues that you need to have in a Drupal project When you go to create your readme file, there is a template that say all the information that you need to put in, into the file. Here you see one example for the Asana module. There are sections. In this case, we have introduction, requirement, installation, configuration, and maintainers. And when you go to create the help page, there is a link, yes? Uh, for best practices, uh, you know you have the readme.txt, right? So you, do you have a specific way of doing it? Because you know, for example, personally I use the, um, the API module for documentation, however it doesn't parse txt files, right? For you, what's the best way of doing documentation in Drupal? Because probably the readme.txt is it's it can be parsed uh, probably for, with, with a parser in Drupal, right? In Drupal.org. But is there a better way of doing things for best practices and documentation? There is another thing that we will be we will see at the end. We have the readme is for the basic documentation about your module how your module works, how to install your module, requirement, additional modules, maybe some drush command that uh, comes with your module. You have the, the project page. In the project page, you can add more information about how to use your module. And you have the module guide. This is, we will see an example at the end. This is more ex, uh, bigger and you can put more information, you can add image, example of how to use your model. I don't know if this yeah, answers yeah, your yeah, question. It's just that I just run into this problem that uh, readme files, when they are PHP files, Sorry, the API module only parses PHP files. Ah, you're talking about the about the documentation for yes. your functions? Yes. I just add the doc block in each function. Yeah, but I've seen that uh, the readme that you have here, it's an extension txt file. Yes. And other documentation module only parses PHP files. Because in this case is a simple documentation on how to start using your module. Yeah, yeah, correct. That's why I put in this file. It's like the quick start guide. Yeah. And then when you go to the help page, it's like how to use the module and what comes with the module. And then you can create in Drupal another page to show with more example how to use your model, how to extend your model. You will see an example. Okay. There is another common issue that you can have in your project. If you need a library, usually we use Composer. 
Even if it's not mandatory to have a compose, composer JSON file in your project, it's a good practice if you include one like this in your project. So here you have another common issue that you can use, create a composer JSON file. And here we have the example. Now keeping the record of your change. Usually when you develop, you add new features, you create some tags to fix problem or you add new functionality to your model, but your user need to be informed about the change. That's what you see each time that Drupal create a new version, you can go to see the change log and see what what the problem comes with the module, what problems are solved or what new tasks are included in the in the project. So if you don't find something in Drupal or you think that we don't have a standard or a guide or a guide to create something, you can go always to the issue for Drupal core idea and create a new issue and will be discussed and maybe will be created a new guide or a new standard or something like this to help to other people to contribute to Drupal. In this case, <clears throat> we need the change log file. Here, you can see a template for this uh, issue. We have a link to the guide that talk how to create the commit message and how to create the, the message for the exchange log. And this will be one example of a change log file. We have the issue number, then the people that, that help fixing the problem and a description of the issue. Some people think that they need to take each line from the git log and then put this information in a file, but we have a tool in the community to create automatically this file. The git relays node for Drush is a command that will add in your environment some Drush command that will help you to create the change log file. Here you will see the project the project page and this is the comma drush r in change log. This is something that some people don't imagine that exists but in Drupal we have a standard for the user interface. There is a page in Drupal for the user interface standard that say, that say, do not use please, this make it so as the user is supposed to do a favor for someone. So maybe if you contribute model, you, can, you need to check your model to see if you add please enter your name or please select here your age. We need to remove this from Drupal. And another, don't refer to Drupal in the module help page. This is something that when I see this, oh, why? But they say because somebody can take your module to create a distribution and they don't want that the users know that it's Drupal what you are using for the, for the site. So you need to remove Drupal from the module help page. So this is two other common uh, issue that you can find in your project. Read these links and you will be surprised to another thing that you need to take in account when you create your, your models related to the user interface. Another important part in the community 
is the coding standard. So when you when you code, when you create your code, it's important to have in mind all the Drupal standard. There are some standards that are easy to remember, but there are another that's, that is a little difficult. And sometimes you forget to remove one use statement that you use and you delete the code. Uh, you have one in your set use statement. You can use this tool, color. There is a command PHP CS with some parameters. And this command will review all your files and you will see a report like this. The file name and the line with the problems. In this case, you see that there is a X here. When it comes like this, you can use another comma to fix automatically this problem. Because in this case, this you use it, use statement, so the tool will be removed this automatically for you. And you run again PHP CS, and you will only see the problem that you need to fix manually. So this is a powerful tool for verify the coding standard. Do you know about this tool? If not, it's time to take a look. OK. Now we will talk about the project page. The project page is very important because when you go to Drupal to search a project, this is what you see before you use the project, the project page. This is a little joke about Drupal. Okay. Tips for a great project page. Usually, you need to include these things in your project page. And we will see that if you create your module and then you try to create your project page, this will be very easy for you because you have maybe 16 or 18 percent of all what you need to write in this page. Okay. The, third, the, the first thing is show the user what your, your project do, what problem does it solve, who is the audience, how your project can help to solve some problems. But this information is in two, in, in two, uh, in two sides that you create before. This is one example for the modules weight project, the project page. You remember that you write the the project help page? Well the information that you put in this in this hook in the hook help is similar to the information that you will write in your project page. In the left side, we have the help page for the module, and the right side, we have the, the project page. The requirement. The requirement for your module is a section inside the readme file. So you, you only need to go to your readme file, and if you write your requirement, because your module maybe needs, in this case, for the Asana project, we need addition, uh, one additional library. So you only copy paste and maybe add a little format to your text and you have your requirement section for your project page. Recommend, uh, recommended modules. This is another section from your readme file. So you only need to go to your readme file, copy and paste in the project page. Known problems. For this section, this is one example for the node revision delete project. You go to the project issue queue 
and you filter for the category book report that are open and you will see what are the problems that the people know about your project that are not solved and you put this information in the project page. Similar project and how they are different, this is the hardest part because you need to go to the Drupal module page, you need to filter. In this case, we filter by node, revision, delete. And you need to check all the modules that do something similar to your project. And then you need to study, to study these modules to see what are the difference between the module that you are creating and the other module that exists. If you see here, this, this is a module with a link to the module. Here, this is a little description about this module. And here, the difference between the node revision delete module and the revisionator module. Like this, you will guide your users or the people that are using your module to see if they need another similar model or they need your model. If you go to see the node revision delete project page in Drupal, you will see, uh, I think that is a, this is a model that I maintain. I think that this is a good example of a project page. You will see many sections with many information about the module. And all, I think that all the sections that the people say that you need to have in your project page, you can find it in the node revision delete module. For the resource, in the edit form for your project page, you will see that you can add screenshots, documentation, demo. For the demo, you can only use the simple test link here. Simple test, project, and your project name. And this will be create a link to test automatically your module in the simple test site. The change log, and you can add a link to, the, to your module documentation guide. Something important to have in mind when you are develop, de developing uh, or maintaining a Drupal module is to stay up to date with the core modification, with the new core change. Because usually some things are changing in the core, like this is a good example, the Drupal get message and Drupal set message function will be replaced in Drupal 0.6 by a, mes a messenger service. So if you know this six months, four months before the release of the new version of Drupal, you can start creating your patch. There is a, a Twitter channel, a Twitter user that you can follow with the change for the Drupal core, or you can go directly to check the issue queue for the change. So when when you see a, a change in the core that will affect your, your module, you can create automatically a new issue queue, or a user can create a new issue in the issue queue for you and you can start working in the patch. This is one example in one module, in the admin toolbar module. But this user forgot to use the, use the issue summary template. So I just add another message, a polite message saying, send for reporting, please remember the next time use the issue, the issue summary template. Okay. As Drupal inform the users that there are changes in the core, 
you need to inform your user that you will add some change in your module. For this, you have the change record. In the change record, you will add in which brand the change is introduced, in which version the change will be introduced, add a description, and you can add one example talking about what's new or what will be modified and what be deleted in your in your model. You can write your guide for your project. This is important because in the readme file is the basic information to start using your model. In the model help page is you uh, there are another information talking about your model, description about your model, how to use your model, but you can add additional information in the documentation guide for your model where something like how to extend your model. In this case, this is a module that dispatch an event and the user that create another module can use this even to create new functionality in another models. So in this case, this information is used to create a sub-module that will be create an integration between the only one module and the admin toolbar. So this is this is an information that usually you don't find in, in the readme or in the module help page. So you create a guide where you will be explaining how to extend your module or how to to use your module. You can add image or another information. So release the baby. If you go to your project page, you will see that there is a guide saying how to release your project. You need to create a tag, push the tag to the server and then you will have a link to create a new release and you will add the information for the release. There, is, there, are, uh, there is an important part that are the release nodes. The release node when Drupal core, when the Drupal project release a new version, you see that there are or if many many lines saying what are new in the project, what bugs are fixed in the project, what are the new features, and usually you need to add this information in your project too. I will put here one example for the admin toolbar project. This is a release note, but this not say this this is nothing when you read many book fixes with books. New feature, okay, but what are the new features? And code cleaning. Here, you don't know what are new in the modules. But you can use the git release node for Drush. Do you remember the, the project that we talked before? You can create this release node. In this case, you have more information, you have a link to the issue, you have a link to the user that helped to solve the problem, and you have the description. But there is another tool, Drupal point uh, org cli. This is a this is a tool that allows you to use this command to create a better release node. So if you see here, in this side, we have more information. We have the contributors with links to their profiles. We have the change. We have a section for the box features and tasks for the module. If you are stuck in some point, you can get help from the community. 
Usually I use the Drupal Answer site to describe the problem that I have. I create a description. There are many users that usually answer your questions. And if I pass two days or three days without having a without having an answer, I go to Slack and I'm, please somebody know how to fix this and I put the, the link. And usually there are users that will help you solving the problems that you have in your models. So keep, keep in mind, learn how to contribute to Drupal. Uh, at least for me, take me years and I'm still learning how to do the, the thing in the correct way. Every week I, I see a new thing, or I, I discover how to improve the model, how to create new thing in the models. So don't think that this presentation for one hour will, will create a master for you, will, will be like the, like the, the magic wand. So take your time, study a little about this if you want to improve your model and if you want to start contributing to Drupal. Here there are some models that I maintain in the community. The admin toolbar module, the only one module, drush help, modules wait and no revision delete. If you want to see the full list, you can go to, to my Drupal profile. Uh, well, that's all for the presentation. And uh, same for your attention. We have Yoda again here. Are you still awake? So I'm sorry for my English. Next time will be in Spanish and you will enjoy it, I know. So if you have some question. No? That's the end. You answered everything. Huh? You answered everything. <laughs> it seems.